This goes in the pile of things that need to be knit ASAP because it's so close to Christmas. Hi everyone and welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Knee Knits. My name is Amy and here I talk about all things knitting. In today's podcast episode number 26, where I'll be sharing what I've been knitting for the past two weeks. I can't believe I'm filming another podcast. I feel like I just filmed the last podcast. This month of December has been flying by. I personally have been extremely busy both at work and in my non-work life, so knitting has been few and far between. I'm trying to squeeze in as many stitches as I can when I have free time. I'm feeling a little bit behind with videos, but I'm hoping that I can sort of catch up and give you guys a lot of end of the year winter videos when I have a break from work after the holidays. Also, before we get into all of the content of today's episode, I do want to remind the giveaway winner of the Knitovation Stitch Dictionary. I picked a new winner last podcast because the original winner never contacted me. I am still waiting to hear back from the second winner. So if this is you, Handmade by Tori, you have won the Knitovation Stitch Dictionary giveaway that was provided by Penguin Publishing. So please send me an email here so we can get that book sent to you. And if you don't reply to me before I film the next podcast in two weeks, I will pick a new winner and hopefully they will respond. <laughs> that being said, I do have a decent amount of knitting updates to share with you all. So we'll just dive right in to my first finished object to share and that is what I'm wearing and it's my boho blush shawl. I'm so excited to have this off my needles as I've been working on it since October and I really wanted to have it done in time to wear for the holiday season and I was able to do just that. Although this project did take me a lot longer than I initially anticipated, I'm so happy with the finished result and really excited to talk about what I think of the pattern. So this is Boho Blush by Andrea Mowry. It is a crescent moon shaped or half circle shaped shawl. It's a fingering weight knit with three and a half millimeter needles. The yarn that I use is Sorella Yarns Classic Sock in the color red, which is from the Taylor Swift Eras collection. Now the pattern calls for 250 grams of fingering weight yarn. However, I only used a little bit over 200 grams of yarn to do the entire shawl. I did exclude the fringe that is in the pattern and is accounted for in the yardage for the pattern. So I think that did save me a significant amount of yarn. I haven't weighed the shawl yet. And I know that sometimes with yarn, you might not get exactly 100 grams per skein. So I will, when I'm done filming this, weigh my whole shawl and then put here the actual weight of the yarn that I use so you guys could use it for your own reference. I definitely think that this is a shawl that you could squeeze out of two fingering weight skeins of yarn if that's all you have. I think to avoid a dangerous game of yarn chicken with it, I would just maybe eliminate one or two rows of garter stitch in the many different sections of garter stitch that exist in the pattern and then you should have plenty of yarn to finish the project. I will take it off so we can see all of the details of the shawl. It is blocked and I've been wearing it kind of casually around my apartment so I wouldn't say it has a full wear test you know of like being outdoors in the cold and seeing how it holds up to maybe like some snow. We haven't really gotten snow yet here but I'll probably imagine myself wearing this on a snowy day in January or February. These are the details of the boho blush shawl and you can see it has a ton of drape. It is a really nice uh, feature of the tonal yarn. I feel like this pattern lends itself very nicely to tonal hand dyed yarn. It is mostly garter stitch and it's broken up with sections of brioche and lace. The brioche is just basic brioche. I'm not too much of a brioche expert. This was actually my very first time doing brioche, but you just have the basic kind of looks like ribbing, but it's brioche section. The lace section is the classic feather and fan lace pattern. And you can see all of the texture and waviness that comes from the feather and fan lace. And it sort of ripples into the garter stitch to give some of the garter a little bit of waviness around it. There are three stripes of brioche and then two stripes of lace all with garter. You do start here in the middle. This is your cast on point and there is a garter stitch border that runs along the whole shawl. The shawl is finished with a stretchy bind off so you do have a garter section at the end and then 
There is a bind off that involves some yarn overs to give you some extra stretch. And this is what it looks like. I honestly don't know if I did it right because I feel like I have these weird bumps that, you know, I don't know. I don't know if they're supposed to be there, uh, if you guys can see that, but that's what happened when I followed the instructions. Could have totally been on me. Regardless, I don't really have an issue with the bumps. You, you can't see them at all, but it does have a very nice stretchy edge. The shawl is, I think, a very decent size. For someone who's not a shawl knitter, I was happy with the size. If it was like any larger than this, I probably would have gotten tired of knitting it, but I measured and you can see my arms are full out here and it's a little bit longer than that. I did measure it from end to end and it's kind of hard to measure because it curls up into like a C shape. So like I kind of measured from this edge of the shawl when laying flat to the other edge of the same like Thing. So it's not exactly like tip to tip. It's like edge to edge based on how it curls in and I got a width of 56 inches and then I measured the deepest point from the cast on point to the bottom here I got about 15 inches and it does have a lot of stretch it might grow over time because it's a super wash yarn and because it's garter stitch so pretty decent size shawl it does wrap really nicely around the neck and around the shoulders I think the curling that it does naturally at the end is interesting. It's not my favorite, but I don't mind it. I knew that it was going to do that based off of the pattern photos and the project photos on Ravelry before I started it. So that was a conscious choice. Like I knew that was going to happen and I still knit the pattern. But to be honest, I don't really like when shawls do this, but I think that's just something that happens naturally with this shawl shape. It is very limited by the garter stitch edging along the top. This is definitely the point of most resistance in terms of stretch. Like the fabric has a lot more stretch than the edge and the edge is knit with yarn overs the whole way through. So it's supposed to give more stretch. I can't imagine what this would have been like if there were no yarn overs in the garter edge because then it probably would have been really tight. But regardless, it still has a lot of drape and flow. So all around great reviews of this shawl pattern, great reviews of you know, the finished object. I'm really excited to have it. I think there's a lot of different ways that I can style it. I haven't fully experimented with styling it yet. Right now I just do like the simple loop like you just saw and it looks pretty nice, looks pretty Christmassy. And yeah, I'm really excited to wear it. I definitely really liked how the pattern had alternating sections to keep me engaged while knitting. And as someone who's never done brioche before, I thought that it explained the brioche quite well and I didn't really need to look up too many other tutorials. I just followed what the pattern had written and it came out pretty good. Overall, really happy with this finished object. I do have a couple other small finished objects to share with you. The first are my dorsal socks. I revived these from my unfinished whips pile last podcast and talked about how I was knitting the second sock. So I finally finished it. I forced myself one night to stay up and just keep knitting until they were done and cast off at the toe. And I'm really happy to finally have these off the needles. This was a summer knit that I started, I don't even know what month, but it was in the summer. So it was time for me to get these off my needles. And the dorsal socks are a pattern by Helen Stewart as part of the Handmade Sock Society collection. And they feature a sort of cable lace pattern at the back, which are supposed to resemble whale tails, hence the name dorsal socks. It's a really cute motif. I think it's hard to see on the sock blockers because it folds exactly at that point. So I will rotate them this way to show you all what they look like. And now that it's blocked, it does sit pretty nicely. Like it's all stretched out beforehand. They were kind of bunched up so you can see there the patterning. This is your basic top-down sock. The pattern gives instructions for a heel flap and gusset. However, I subbed in a fish lips kiss heel, which I wanted to try, and I really like it. I'm going to continue using it and see how I like the fit. This was knit on two and a half millimeter needles, which are size US one and a half needles. I cast on 56 stitches. I don't remember how many rows I knit for the heel and the sock and stuff, but I'm really happy with the finished product of these socks. The yarn that I use is Sorella Yarn Nylon Sock in the color Toal. It's from their Spring Tonals collection. It's this really nice tonal light blue, and it's just gonna be a really good sock to wear this winter, especially with my winter boots. So 
these are blocking they're still a little damp i just washed them last night but glad to have these off the needles. And my last finished object to share today is a baby Oslo hat. This is one of my many gift knits that I'm trying to get through as quickly as I can. And this Oslo hat is a pattern by Petite Knit. I have both the Oslo hat mohair edition and the Oslo hat regular patterns. And I spoke last podcast about the differences between the two and trying to pick sizes for the recipients. It's kind of difficult. Read some project pages online that said that the baby size was too big based on Petite Knit's stitch count. So I actually cast on 88 stitches for this one, which is not a stitch count in any of the Petite Knit sizes. It's actually just a little bit less than the smallest one. So hopefully this fits. I know it's hard to knit gifts for people that you don't like have easy access to. These recipients don't live in the same state as me, so I'm just kind of fingers crossed hoping that they fit. If anything, I'd rather this be too big because then they can grow into it rather than be too small. So hopefully this will fit my niece quite well. We'll find out, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the yarn that I use for this is Knit Picks Hawthorne in the color Panettone Speckle. I held this double because it's a fingering weight sock yarn and used three and a half millimeter needles to knit it. Now besides changing the stitch count, I did follow the instructions for how long to knit the brim before folding it together and then I did shorten the main body of the hat strictly because I did not want to run out of yarn. I only had one 100 gram skein of this yarn and it is kind of thick. This is a thicker fingering weight yarn. There's less than 400 yards per skein. To avoid yarn chicken, I think I shortened the body by about an inch, which is why it looks kind of short. I'll fold it back up if you can remember. It looks kind of short compared to like other Oslo hats and I did bring back the finished object that I did last week, which was also a baby size. And this is the same stitch count, but it's a lot thinner of a yarn that I held double. If you can just compare. So I knit these both on three and a half millimeter needles. This yarn is a fingering weight four ply, where this yarn is a fingering weight two ply. And I just didn't want to run out of yarn. I used 80 grams for this one. And then I ended up using about 92 grams of this one. So really was close with the yarn chicken, but glad I was able to finish it without running out. I did want to measure how wide this is because I forgot to do that last episode with that brown baby Oslo hat, just to give you guys an idea. So I cast on 88 stitches with three and a half millimeter needles. And this was a two ply fingering weight held double. And the width of this is about eight and a half inches. If you guys can see that there, eight and a half inches wide, so about 17 inches in circumference. Whereas this one also 88 stitches, but it's a four ply sock yarn that was held double on the same needle size. This is only about seven and three quarters inches across, which would be about 15-ish, 15 and a quarter inches. I think I did that math right. I could have done it wrong, but <laughs> this one is a little bit smaller. If you guys can see that there. So again, with hats, it's like they kind of stretch to fit. So as long as they can like stretch to fit over the head. And again, if it's too big, hopefully they'll grow into it in future years, rather be it too big than too small. But these are the two Ozzo hats that I have finished so far for gift knitting. And while we're on the topic of all the Oslo hats I'm knitting for gifts, I might as well talk about the next one that I started because I have four total that I'm trying to knit. So I, of course, have cast it on the third because time is ticking and I need to get them finished. So this is considered a new cast on for today's podcast episode. And this is for one of my nieces who is a bit older. So I am doing one of the child sizes. And this is such a really pretty yarn combo. So I am holding together Sorella Yarns Classic Sock or Nylon Sock. It's the Nylon Sock in the color Boulangerie, which is this really pretty pale pink. And I'm holding it together with a Birch Surrey from Birch and Lily, which is a lace weight Surrey alpaca silk in the color Marvelous, which is this beautiful kind of darker pink Obviously it has some mauve, hence the name Marvelous, and it has some speckles of dark blue and darker pink and held together. 
I'm really loving this fabric. It is so pretty and I really love how the wool is lighter than the mohair and it kind of gives this like multi-dimensional effect and then in combination with the speckles it just looks really nice and of course it's super soft because of the Surrey alpaca. So you can see progress here. I just folded for the brim. I just turned the work and now we're just knitting the body. Like I said before, I'm trying to get through these as fast as possible. So exactly after I'm done filming this video, I'm just gonna sit on the couch and knit this until, you know, I get the body done. It's one of those projects that I think goes really quickly if you really focus on it, but it's also really easy to just put aside because it's so small, but I need to focus on the gift knits before I knit other stuff. So hopefully this will get done and then I can cast on my fourth and final Ozzo hat for gift knitting. So that was kind of transitioning into works in progress. So I'm gonna talk about some other projects that I've been working on. And the next is the Turtle Dove Shawl by Sari Nordlin. Sari Nordlin released Clue 2 last Wednesday, not this most recent Wednesday, but like last Wednesday. So I was able to finish it. I can tell I'm kind of falling behind because I kind of wanted to have everything done by like, every Wednesday when she released the new clue so I was like rushing to knit this but it's so cute it's coming along really nicely so some basics about the shawl pattern it is a four-part mystery knit along sorry like I just mentioned is releasing one clue every Wednesday it started at the beginning of the month and the last clue will come out on December 20th which is also when she'll release the full pattern as a whole it's recommended to be knit with one strand of fingering weight merino held with one strand of lace weight silk mohair and then you knit it on three and a half millimeter needles it's an all-over charted sort of triangular shaped shawl and the yarn that I'm using is a yarn by Pickles and it's called Bliss. This is it here. It is a blend, a really interesting blend of mohair, wool, and alpaca. It's a single ply. It has a beautiful halo. You can probably see the fuzzies coming off. Maybe if I hold it against my black shirt, you can see the nice halo. It kind of glows and I'm holding this double and I chose to knit my shawl on four millimeter needles because this is a little bit thicker than a true like fingering weight and then held double. I just wanted to make sure it still had good drape. So yeah, this is the fabric that I'm getting so far. I was a little worried that it wouldn't be drapey enough, but as it's getting bigger, I can see that it has some drape. It's definitely thick. Like I can definitely tell maybe a silk mohair and fingering weight merino was a better pick but I'm not upset about this at all. I think it looks really nice. The cream color with the cables just is a really nice combo. Oh, and the color I'm using is color 1000 called Marble. So, so far with this pattern in clue one, we got this initial sort of horseshoe cable and we got this first column of traveling twisted stitches with bobbles. And then we got just a little bit of this cable here. I don't think Clue one showed how much this cable would develop. So then clue two did this whole cabling here, which is, it's kind of like a horseshoe cable, but it does have a row, no, it has have a column of purl stitches in the middle. So it's a little bit different. You can see how it looks a little bit different than that first horseshoe column. And then we also got another column of traveling stitches with bobbles. And then it just barely started a new cabling pattern. I can't really tell what it's going to be, but because this is clue two of four, and I know that the shawl is gonna come back in and decrease to be symmetrical, I don't think we're gonna get much more of this cable. I think it might just be this. And then I'm assuming clue three will start to decrease it at the same rate that it increased at, and then it'll be kind of mirroring what I did in clues one and two. Now some thoughts about this pattern, because it is a mystery knit along, I had no idea what it was going to look like when I purchased the pattern, and it's a complete surprise every time the clue comes out. And I will say, when I saw the post for clue two, I was a little bit disappointed that I saw another instance of the traveling cables with bobbles, and then another instance of this cable that looks pretty similar to this very first column of cables, because I don't know, I thought a mystery knit along would have more excitement in the pattern. Like you look forward to knitting something different with every clue and the fact that the pattern was just repeating itself at first disappointed me. But then as I was knitting it, I grew to appreciate the fact that 
you know, I have a feeling Sari probably designed this just as like a regular shawl pattern and then she thought that it would be a good application for a mystery knit along and Sari's designs are very well thought out, you know, they're very detailed and I think when you think about the shawl as a whole, this is like a stunning design and even though it uses the same motifs multiple times, it adds so much harmony and really like gives the shawl look a very professional style. I think if she had done a different pattern in every single column, it might have looked too busy, it might have looked too, like, you know, it wouldn't have matched Sari's style of knitting, which is very well thought out and planned, and I don't think she wanted to do something that had a hodgepodge of different motifs just for the sake of keeping the mystery exciting. So although my initial ideas were kind of disappointment with Clue 2, I grew to enjoy it and I can say that I am not really disappointed anymore. I'm really happy with this shawl pattern, I'm really happy with the mystery knit along and I'm not upset that I decided to do it and I'm really excited for the finished result. Now that being said, this is a symmetrical shawl and there's only four clues and like I did just mention, clues three and four are probably just going to be decreases of this pattern. So if anything, the only mystery was in clue one and two. So. There's also that, which I think maybe we should have known when Sari said she was doing a shawl pattern because all of her shawls are symmetrical. But again, that's just something that I'm appreciating. I'm not upset about it, but I can understand how if you really wanted a true mystery it along with something different and crazy along the way, maybe this was not your best pick for a pattern. So yeah, I'm filming this on Saturday. Clue 3 just came out a couple days ago. I have not started working on it, but I'm going to try to get through Clue 3 before Clue 4 comes out, and then I'll be really excited to show you all the finished shawl in the next podcast. And I have one more new cast on to show you guys. It is also Christmas themed. As you can see, the theme of today's podcast episode, everything is kind of centered around the holidays or like Sari's mystery knit along is kind of like a December thing. So very topical knitting lately. I have not really been working on any garments. The urge to knit on a sweater though is so strong, but I know I need to get done the projects that have like timely deadlines, including this one. So I started a pair of Christmas socks. Aren't they so cute? Oh, they're so fun. So I got this Christmas sock set from Honey and Quill at the Boston Fiber Festival. I purchased it at the Boston Fiber Company yarn store, which is in Boston. And it was the sock set that had this beautiful Christmas themed multicolored yarn. And then it did come with a mini skein that was a solid green. I, I should have grabbed it, but it was like this bright green color in a mini skein. And that was only at the Boston Fiber Company store during the Fiber Festival. Now, Honey and Quill came out with that holiday collection pre-order like the next week, and she actually changed the mini skein in that set prior to her pre-order, and she changed the mini to a red, which is this red here. And so she offered to me the red mini skein because she thought it was a better fit for the yarn, I think, or just like a different option that offered more contrast. So when she offered it to me, I was like, yeah, sure, I love the red skein. I do kind of like it better than the green just because of the higher contrast between the main color and the mini. So that's what I cast it on. Both of these yarns are four ply sock yarn, 7525 blend of superwash merino and nylon. So the pattern I cast it on are Hermione's Everyday Socks by Erica Luter. This is a free pattern on Ravelry and it has just very simple pearl and knit stitch texture that I think looks really nice. I wanted something very simple for this highly variegated yarn, but I just wasn't feeling a vanilla sock like all stockinette, so I'm really happy I chose this pattern. I think it shows off the yarn quite well while still giving it some texture. Now, working on my perfect sock fit, I had done these socks in two and a half millimeter needles. I cast on 56 stitches. They fit great. They're nice and snug. I feel like all of my socks tend to be too loose, so I'm trying to go for something more snug. However, with that needle size, I would prefer a tighter gauge. I feel like the gauge of the stockinette on this is just a little bit too loose for my liking. It's nothing bad. I would just prefer a tighter knit. 
So I decided to size down the needles for these socks. I'm using size 2.25 millimeter needles, but I cast it on 60 stitches to account for the needle change size. And I'm hoping that these will fit just as well as those ones, but while giving it a tighter gauge. I started with a two by two ribbed cuff. I did 20 rounds and then I did 72 rounds for the leg. And I am doing the fish lips kiss heel again. I actually just finished it last night in the contrasting color. And with the fish lips kiss heel, you do have to knit your leg about an inch longer than you want it to be in your finished sock because it kind of incorporates some of that leg fabric into the shape of the heel. So if you're knitting a regular top-down sock and you've never done fish lips kiss heel before, it's a lot shallower than a heel flap and gusset. So if you knit your leg to the same length, then if you did a heel flap and gusset sock, your sock is going to end up shorter because it gets kind of sucked into the heel with this. So I did the fish lips kiss heel again. I'm starting to learn the pattern. I would love to memorize it because the PDF is so long and so wordy for no reason. <laughs> and you have to skip to like page 11 to even get to the pattern. So maybe after the next sock, I'll have it kind of memorized where I don't need to like pull it up every time on my laptop, but it came out pretty good. And then I just barely started knitting in the round again with the main color. With this pattern, the Patterning will continue just on the top of the foot and then the bottom of the foot will be all stockinette My plan is to do a basic wedge toe with the contrasting red color. So really cute pair of Christmas socks I would love to have these done by Christmas to wear them on Christmas. I think would be really cute so again, this goes in the pile of things that need to be knit ASAP because It's so close to Christmas. <laughs> I do have one acquisition to share before I end, and that is a Santa Scarn booklet. Santa Scarn patterns are really beautiful, and I've always wanted to get one of the booklets. My husband Nick was traveling, he was visiting some family in Jersey, and he was near Red Bank, New Jersey, and if you have ordered online from Mother Knitter, which is a US retailer, they carry a lot of Santa Scarn, and they're based out of Red Bank, New Jersey. So I asked him if he could stop by and pick this up for me. I've been wanting this for a really long time for one specific pattern. This is Santa Scarn DIY, it is number 2302. And it's a really nice sturdy book. The paper is really thick. I really like the printing. You know, it's got it's got some heft. It just feels really nice in the hands. So the reason I wanted this booklet was for this pattern. So this is the Abbey sweater by Sanis Garn. Ever since I saw this on their Instagram, I knew I needed to knit it. And you could only get this pattern if you purchase the book. And you can only get the book if you purchase yarn for a pattern in the book. So I'm actually not ready to purchase this amount of yarn for this project. So it's actually not what I had Nick buy at the store. I actually kind of, it's not cheating. It's just maybe a life hack. I had him buy the smallest quantity of yarn possible for purchasing this book, which would be for this little scarf called Lacy. And this requires one skein of Santa Scarn Sunday and one skein of Tin Silk Mohair. So that's what I had him pick up. But I was really excited because I had him pick him up the color Poppy, which has kind of been trending lately. So here it is. It's just this beautiful bright red color. So this is the Sunday. It's a fingering weight merino yarn. This is from the Petite Knit color line. There is 235 meters in this 50 gram ball. And then the matching tin silk mohair is also called Poppy. There's actually no Petite Knit tin silk mohair line, but they made one to match, which I'm really glad that they did. <laughs> so in this 25 gram ball, you get 212 meters. It's a blend of 57% mohair, 28% silk, and 15% wool. So I actually probably won't knit that lacy scarf out of this yarn. I'm probably gonna knit another Sari Nordland triangular shawl, kind of just like the turtle dove shawl. I did just purchase her La Lu shawl pattern, so maybe that will get cast on soon. I'm just really excited to have a bright neon red scarf. And I know my color selection tends to be like within the winter season, and this is not within the winter season at all, but it's just one of those colors that makes me really happy, and I'm really excited to knit with it. So 
really excited about this acquisition. That was, I will go back to the book. I was just talking about the scarf and it made sense to talk about the yarn while I was on it, but I'll just show you what else is in this book because there's a lot of really nice stuff. I could see myself knitting a ton of these patterns. Of course, the Abby sweater was the one that caught my mind, but definitely a good value knowing that I would probably knit multiple of these sweaters or patterns. I mean, they're all stunning, all knit with Santa's Garn yarn, which is my personal favorite brand of yarn. So I'm really excited with this purchase. And that brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you're having a restful and enjoyable end of the year. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next episode. Bye.